Hi and welcome to another Dex from the Graphic Design School. My name is Leanne and today we're going to be doing some 3D typography in Illustrator. We'll be doing this by creating blends and then applying those blends to line work. So as you can see I have a postcard here with a nice vibrant background and then I've created the 3D type on top of that using my Wacom tablet and uh, brush tool. You can use your mouse to create your type, you can use your pen tool, your pencil tool, whatever you feel comfortable with. The main thing when you're creating uh, type and with blends is that it needs to be a singular line, not a double line. So I'll be showing you how to create that. Um, I've got some more showing some different colors. So the same technique but using a lovely yellow and orange and pink blends and then just exploring using blues. So once you create your type you can always go in and edit your colors um, directly. So really simple. This is a great technique to use if you're creating logos. Uh, you can create lovely 3D um, logos, great dimension and you can play with the colors within those blends. So really explore and also swap the colors and um, change what is in front and what is in back. So at the back so you can change how you see that logo. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new document. So I'm creating postcards, but feel free to create whatever format you like. So my standard postcard size is 148 wide by 108 by 105 millimeters high. So I'm just going to create that. The first thing we're going to do is create our blends. So go over to your ellipse tool, grab that, um, and you can just drag an ellipse. So basically the diameter of your ellipse will be the thickness of the stroke on your blend. So there I have it. I'm going to take away my line and I'm going to be working with my gradients. So click on gradients and we can just do the default black to white. So the first gradient I want to create um, to sort of copy that uh, look that we had over here is uh, yellow to green. So double click on your white and I'm just going to a yellow and make it really quite light and vibrant. So lovely strong contrasts work well with this kind of work. And then double click on your black and for this one a nice vibrant green. But allow there to be some contrast there. And then you can also play with the angles of that gradient. We go and then we're going to just select that hold down your option and shift and just drag it across to create another ellipse the same size we're just going to change the gradient color here so I'm going to double click on my yellow and change it to a lightish blue I want to again make it a nice bright blue and then double click on your green we're going to change that to of a navy blue. There we go, uh, that'll do. So then we have our two uh, ellipses with two gradients. We want to blend these two. So the first thing you want to do is just check what your blend mode is. So blend options, it's under object. Um, we want to have specified steps and we're going to add in, this, the default is eight steps. We're going to add in, let's make it a thousand steps. So we get a really smooth blend and go okay. Then we're going to select both our ellipses, go back to Object, Blend, Make. And then we've created a beautiful blend. So we just put that to the side for now. Next thing we want to do is create either our logo or our type. So I'm just going to quickly create a W to show you um, how that works. So I'm just going to draw one. a little bit higher. Check that, so I'm using my line. We can change that to a black so we can see it clearly and then select that. I'm going to Command C to copy it and hold on Command Shift to paste a copy on top of that and then I'm going to reflect that so just to copy it and flip it. I want to flip it vertically and go OK and drag it across until those points intersect 
and then select both those points and go Command J to join. So I have one shape, one line. Um, if it was a double line, if you had type that you converted to outlines, you would have a double line and you'd have to delete the outer or inner line to get a single line like I have here. I'm going to scale this up. And just put that in the center. And there, I can scale this up too. So we can see it clearly. So there, there I have my blend. I'm just going to make a copy of that. So if I need to use the same blend again, I have got a copy. So select your blend, select your line, go to your object, blend, and go to replace spine. And there we go. So what it does is replaces that line that you had there with your blend. So now that we have our blend on our W, we can start to explore um, variants within this. So if we go to our layers, you'll be able to see there's our W and our W is there. And we can select the individual circles within, the ellipses within that and change them. So we can scale it up, make it really juicy and big. We can go to our other blend, scale it up. There, we're starting to get the, the right look. You can also, um, of course, go in and change the actual colors in your gradient. So I'm selecting that, looking at your gradient, I can change that to a different kind of blue, so it blends in better with the green, but I quite like the contrast, or maybe I can lighten it even a little bit, lighten that blue, and perfect. You can change the angle, And so it gets affected in different ways. Another thing you can do with your blends is select your line, go back to object, down to blend, and you can reverse the spine. So it changes um, the direction in which the colors go. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you can also select it, object, blend, and reverse uh, front to back. We'll just go Command Z so you can see that again. So all kinds of things you can do here. Uh, as you saw, these kind of blends work really well with a nice um, bright background. I quite like the light one. Um, and you can go in and change the path too. So maybe if you want to do something different. Just play around with different shapes um, and then we'll just put a rectangle in the background. Um, just align that to my artboard. So go align the artboard, select my single, and add a gradient into that, send it back. And then I like a nice bright contrasting background. So maybe a pink. Pretty awesome. And uh, to a red. Maybe not so deep. I want a nice bright red. Yeah, there we go. And you can change the angle. Maybe 120. Change that to more of a pink red. Yeah, so it's more subtle. There you go. So there you have your W, um, the start of a really cool logo design. Um, I'm going to show you now how to uh, do some type. So I'm just going to move my W over to the side. And let's look at our format here. Um, so, as I said, I use a Wacom tablet. So I have my pen and I can do some nice scripty type using my pen. But you can craft your own type using the pen tool or maybe even using an existing type, um, creating outlines from that and then just deleting the outer lines. Um, but I find it really easy just to create my own type. So grab your paintbrush tool. Um, I'm just going to create a single line and I'm going to do the word O first. So this might take some practice and you'll realize with the blends that sometimes you get unexpected results. So you're just going to play with um, what you can create. So I'm just going to go there we go. They have my O. So I can always go in and change it. I find that O a little bit strange. So I'm going to do another one. 
There we go. And then you can always go in and change your line work if you find the, let me change the curves. And then I also like to use um, the smoothing tool. So especially if you have some curves, just run your smoothing tool around. So you get lovely smooth curves throughout. Or you can go in and manipulate uh, particular points. I'm just gonna change that to a black so you can see it clearly. And then we're gonna use that same blend that we created. So there's my blend. Again, I'm just gonna make a copy of it just in case I wanna use it again. There you go. So selecting my line and selecting my blend, I'm gonna go object, blend, replace spine. There you go. So you might find that a little bit too thick, so you can always go in and, and um, change the, the diameter of those circles. Or perhaps when you apply your blend, you can see little irregularities, you can start to smooth out your, your circle a little bit more. Um, and playing with script, I found some letters work better than others. You can scale down. There we go. And um, I'm just going to do uh, yes. And show you. I like to separate the letters a little bit because if they're too tight, then the blend doesn't work as well. So selecting that, bring that down. Um, again, going object, blend, replace spine, and there we go. So if the type is a little bit difficult to read, what I like to do then is just go in and um, look at the line work in the letters. So I might just move the Y over just a little bit or open up that curve, select the individual points, have left one behind. So you can play with the letters that way. I would maybe drop this curve down just a little bit, just so we can read the letters better. So there we go. So there's that one. Um, feel free to play with your um, different colors. I'll just give you a quick example of um, using, I'll just duplicate that light board quickly. I'll delete that. Show you a different color version. Um, so creating a new gradient ellipse tool, I'm just going to draw that and I'm going to fill that with a gradient. It will give me the last gradient that I used. I'm going to just change it to a, a yellow going through to a red. And double click on that one, change that to a red. And then I'm going to duplicate that one. So hold hold down Option Command Shift and drag it across. There we go. And that one I'm going to change just to uh, pink, going to a red. It'll work. Select both of those. Again, go Object, Blend, Make, and it will create the blend for me. And uh, delete that. Grab my pen, brush tool, and I will just, whoops, go. Create my hello. There we go. Select that. Select my blend. Go object, blend, replace spine, and there we go. So lots of fun to be had with this one. I'd love to see the blends and the typography and the logos that you come up with. Feel free to upload them. And that's all from us at Dex. Goodbye.